Right, so, I'm returning to my bread and butter that is Cars Game Reviews, I still can't believe I haven't received my paycheck from Disney, and finally we've reached Cars 2 the game. Uh, most of the comments about this one reasonably unanimously were negative, but there were some standout comments that seemed to absolutely love the game. I knew going in that there was no more open world, this is something that disappointed heaps of people, but I was pretty optimistic and not too phased by this idea because I feel like I'm completely ready for a more linear Cars game after playing three very similar open world games in a row. As good as Race Rama was, the formula was getting a bit tired. The opening cutscene when you boot up the game has Maida and Michael Caine's character caught up in an action scene set on the oil rig from the movie with Professor Z being the villain before. It's eventually revealed that this is all inside of a simulation in the Chrome training facility. You get dropped into the menu with options like free play and extras and all that. There's even a way to connect this to the now shut down flash based cars MMO which is pretty interesting but as usual let's focus on the main mode which is called Chrome Missions. This is essentially a list of missions to pick from which a group up into chapters, each of which are slightly more difficult than the last. You can pick from a wide array of characters to play as for any mission, and as you go along you unlock even more characters, and you can even play as super minor ones from the movie like the racers from the other countries. Uh, my first impressions of this game were really bad. It forces you to play these super boring, super basic tutorials that teach you how to steer and drift and jump and that sort of thing. Uh, mixed in are some fairly standard races where the tracks look good, but they have very wide roads which means you don't need to be very precise, especially because the difficulty is so easy. I also realised that there weren't any cutscenes or really much of a story at all, it just seemed like random scenarios strung together under the excuse that it's a simulation. And yeah, throughout the campaign there's not really any cutscenes. I mean there's a few very short ones that are usually just characters being like, here we go, get ready to race at the start of a race, or at the end they're like, damn, foiled again, but that's kind of it. There's nothing really stringing all of this together, there's no real rhyme or reason to it, it's just a long list of events. I actually watched Cars 2 in preparation for this, granted I was barely paying any attention because Cars 2 is terrible, but it still feels like that was a complete waste of time considering how this only vaguely ties into the movie with its tracks and characters. Avalanche Software developed this, which at the time was a studio that Disney owned, and Disney Interactive themselves published this as opposed to THQ who published the last three games. Uh, prior to this, Avalanche had made a lot of budget tier games, including many Disney movie tie-ins, and their most well-known games were probably the TAC trilogy. So the change in direction with Cars 2 the game is unsurprising considering virtually no one involved with the last three games worked on it. Now, at this point, I was having a bit of an existential crisis. Do I go on with this review if I'm not enjoying the game? Will I have anything insightful to say about this? Why do I try to achieve anything when we all die anyway? Uh, once I snapped out of that trance, I just kept grinding out Cars 2 and call it Stockholm Syndrome if you want, but I surprisingly started to enjoy it for a few reasons. Not long into the game, it introduces Mario Kart style weapons into the mix and the game reveals itself to be a full blown kart racer. Now initially I wasn't too into this change and honestly considering the Cars brand I'm still not super into it. I think that like considering the focus the movies have on racing and racing culture, the style the previous games went for by being more traditional races is much more fitting. Uh, looking past that though, is this a good kart racer? I can safely say that yeah, it is a good kart racer. It has all the usual trappings like floaty driving and very familiar drifting, but it adds its own flavour to things too. Uh, at the bottom of the screen there's a boost meter which you fill up by doing burnout-esque stunts like overtaking, driving backwards, flipping around in the air with the right stick and drifting, as well as smashing parts of the environment and collecting gas pickups. Instead of holding down boost, you press it once to use a quarter of the bar for a small boost like a mushroom in Mario Kart, or you double tap it for a large boost when it's completely full, which deflects attacks and knocks back opponents if you run into them, just like a star power up in Mario Kart. It's a really good risk reward system which encourages dangerous driving and more importantly it allows all the item pickups to be weapons. What I like about these weapons is that for the most part they take some skill to use. This usually means that you actually have to aim them, and while there is a blue shell and a red shell equivalent, the blue shell is rare and the red shell is exceptionally slow and quite clumsy to the point where I'd often rather pick something else up instead because manoeuvring your car around to aim feels quite natural. Something really clever it does is utilise that driving backwards mechanic that's made it way throughout this series somehow which now has more purpose than ever. If you're in front of the pack and pick up a weapon you shoot forwards then just pull a 180 and shoot it backwards while learning boost for driving backwards. Uh, it's genius. I also like how you can barge cars left or right, that's a really satisfying mechanic. Yeah. 
As the missions went on, they slowly got more difficult and it gradually introduced new tracks and phased out old tracks, which was great because the newer ones were generally more complex and fun to play. It kept the game feeling more fresh than it otherwise would because the locations were split up nicely around the world before it eventually wound up at the familiar Radiator Springs. That said, overall, I was still somewhat disappointed by the tracks. Like, they look nice and they play decently, but I didn't find them to do enough interesting things to stand out from each other design-wise. Like, sometimes they would put in dynamic bits like falling rocks or buses driving around the city, but they didn't lean heavily enough into that stuff, which would have given the tracks more life, and despite a lot of the shortcuts being nicely implemented, there wasn't any standout difficult corners or jumps or set pieces or anything like that that could have added some excitement and distinction to the tracks. I also wish the tracks were generally more narrow, but they're still pretty good, just not Mario Kart or Sonic All-Stars good. They also have pretty decent standard-ish, sometimes spy-esque music playing, which is nice. I especially liked the races in Italy, which had super traditional cheesy Italian music playing. I will not soon forget it. Enjoy! Speaking of Mario Kart, this game even has its own battle mode. Uh, in the Chrome missions, it's a wave-based ordeal where you circle around small areas taking out enemies and it's quite boring since it's often too easy and when you die you just respawn without consequence. This mode has one map in London that's particularly bad because it's so bumpy which means it's incredibly hard to aim any of the weapons and it's so large that it's always underpopulated. I never liked when I had to do one of these missions but they do break up the usual content well enough. There's also a pretty fun burnout road rage knockoff where you need to take out as many enemy vehicles as possible in a certain time, and there's something of a survival mode where you need to drive with precision to collect purple things to stay alive. Uh, none of these extra modes are as good as just racing, but again they break it up well enough. In the final chapters, I found that the difficulty got hard enough that I was well enjoying myself, even though it was still slightly on the easy side. But I gotta say, I was still kinda disappointed by it all. Like, it's it's made well enough, but coming off the back of three games that felt fresh and inspired and focused on portraying the Cars universe in an immersive and faithful way, this feels a bit unambitious, and I'd go as far as saying it feels a bit unfinished too. Like, the game's performance isn't great, and Professor Z seems to be set up as the villain in the opening cutscene, and he appears as the enemy in all the battle modes, but there's no overarching story tying him in properly, which feels suspiciously absent. Even at the end of the game, it didn't cap off with a cutscene, it, it didn't even roll the credits, it just stopped giving me the option to move on to the next race, and that was that. But you know what? This is a kart racer, and kart racers are best enjoyed in multi player. So to sum up my single player experience with this, it's worse than all three Cars games before it because they focused on appealing to playing alone, whereas this focuses almost entirely on the multiplayer. Or at least that's the impression I got once I was done with it. So I asked a friend who, to everyone's surprise, was willing to play Cars 2 the game with me and without surprise the game was more fun. The best thing about the multiplayer here is that literally everything you can do in single player, you can also do in multiplayer with up to four people. That means that the Chrome missions can be played through entirely in co-op and that is fantastic. Suddenly the difficulty issues are subverted and basically fixed because you're up against real human enemies and maybe I'm delusional but it seems like the enemy AI ramps up in multiplayer too. Uh, outside of the Chrome missions there's also the free play mode where you can customize your races which is all well and dandy but you need to play through the missions in the single player mode to unlock everything for this mode. The only real problem that remains standing out with Cars 2 when playing in multiplayer is that the maps are still kind of boring. Otherwise this is a pretty serviceable kart racer with some pretty clever mechanics ideas that is a good time even if it lacks some polish. It's certainly the one to buy your kids if they like cars and split screen, but personally I didn't find too much value in playing this. That's not to say it's bad, but I found the previous games to be at least much more interesting from a game design perspective because they were a lot more unique and especially ambitious. So I can see why there was so much disappointment with this game, and personally I can't pretend that I'm not at least a bit disappointed, but at the same time it's a pretty solid kart racer and there's not a lot to complain about when looking at this in a vacuum. And with that, we wrap up the much-awaited Cars 2 review. As usual, I want to thank all my patrons, including everyone on the screen right now, and especially including Caden the Dingo, uh, Dad, Devin Grandel, Dump Truck Parked in My Driveway, Evil Chicken, Homer 821, Labcat, Lucas Racevic, Magnus Ikemo Stavik, Matthias Baeus, Maximilian Kunzman, 
uh, May Arise, Minnie Me's Left Testicle, uh, Mrs. Minnie Me, Peaceful Kumquat, Trixie Emerson, Writing on Games, and Review Disney Play, 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 Play,